So well, we're back to the medium's book. We are still on the Q&A about evocations. Uh, I believe we should start on question 22, right, Soraida? Yes, we are in 22. Okay, so uh, we are, you know, as Elmo mentioned last, last week, and uh, these questions are pretty much uh, repeating what we already have studied. So the, the, they are not bringing a lot of uh, new things to us, but it's always uh, good to to re revisit, rediscuss. Okay, so twenty two. Okay, twenty two. Do spirits have to be evoked to manifest? No. Most often they manifest without having been called, which shows that they do so of their own accord. Yeah, we know that, right? We know that, uh, especially us that work with uh, with uh, spiritual help on our mediumship meetings, we don't evoke any spirit. We all, we let them manifest themselves. So, uh, as Kardec, as the spirit says here, more of, most often they manifest without being called. Uh, Chico used to say, right, the phone rings only from there to here, not from here to there, right? And uh, that's. Uh, you can evoke and they may not be willing to manifest. So uh, it's, I think that it's a, a, a clear answer that we all know, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, number 23. When a spirit manifests without being evoked, can we be certain of its identity? Not at all. For deceptive spirits often employ this means in order to better deceive you. Yeah, uh, when we're talking about the, the identity of spirits, uh, the first question is uh, why we should uh, be able to identify the spirits? Is it really important? And we know that the message is what is important. Us in our inferior, still inferior uh, level of evolution, we like to hear the names, especially important and uh, well-known names that gives us uh, more um, sense of security and sometimes affects our pride, right? We are able to receive a message from uh, uh, this more evolved spirit. So we are all capable of, of uh, you know, of higher aspirations and things like that. So, but in, in the end, what matters is the, is the message and deceptive spirits who come and use whatever name they, they think will uh, we will affect us more, so they will try to to disguise themselves using other names. So again, we have to analyze the message. Okay, twenty four. Yeah, well, we'll do like Elmo do, does every week, right? I'm not going to ask if you have any questions. You, if you do, you ask. Okay, twenty four. When we evoke a spirit by our own thought, will it answer even if it doesn't express itself through writing or some other means? Writing is a physical means by which a spirit shows it is present, but it is thought that attracts it and not the act of writing. You know, all these are very basic questions, right? Uh... The, the, what Kardec is asking, do we, need, do we need to write to evoke a spirit or we think about the spirit? We don't need even, even need to say out loud, right? So I, I, we want to evoke, like Elmo's example, I want to evoke my grandmother to manifest here. I have just to think about her and on the thought, ask her to, to give me a communication if possible, right? I don't need to write. I don't need to say out loud. Because in the end, the, the universal language is the language of thought. So that's more than enough. Again, doesn't guarantee anything because we know that evocation does not guarantee that the spirit will show up for several reasons that we discussed last week with them, right? Okay. Well, number 25. When a less evolved spirit manifests, can we make it withdraw? Yes by not listening to it. However, how can you expect it to withdraw if you're amused as at its turbitude? Like the fools among you, 
low order spirits attach themselves to those who listen to them complacently. Hmm. Yeah, here, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the danger here when we, we evoke less evolved spirits is that they may, want, they may like what they, they see and decide not to leave. We can attract them, but uh, to expel them, it's more difficult. Again, we came just to, from a discussion on the influence of spirits on our thoughts, right? And how we disconnect from their influence by disconnecting their thought, through their thought, through our vibrations, right? So here, uh, when you have a less evolved spirit, um, manifestation of a less evolved spirit, the, the, the way to interrupt is to stop listening to it, right? And uh, we see this in the mediumship meetings, right? Sometimes the mediums, uh, the, the, the communication is too difficult and they withdraw from the communication spontaneously uh, by their own will, right? Because it's too difficult. So the, we can make the disconnection, of course, it, in a spiritist center, in the type of work that we do, there is a team of spiritual guides, spiritual benefactors that will take care of these spirits, not allowing them to, to remain connected to us when we leave the center, right? Because it's the work that we are doing there. Now, when we are alone at our home and we attract spirits by our lower uh, vibrations, then it's a different story because we did the the by our own free will, we attracted the spirit. So it's our own free will that has to remove the spirit from uh, being connected to us. Okay. Okay. Number 26. Is evocation in the name of God any guarantee against the interference of evil spirits? God's name does not put all perverse spirits in check, but it restrains many of them. It is a means for you to keep many away, and it is even more effective if pronounced from the bottom of the heart and not as a banal formula. So here is an interesting question, right? Um, you evoke a spirit in the name of God. If the spirit does not believe in God, it doesn't make any difference, right, for the spirit. Uh, if the spirit fears God, it's, it's, it's an evil doer, but it, there are spirits that even in doing evil has an inner fear of God. So they can be restrained by, by evocating in the name of God. But more important and more effective, as they say here, is how our sentiment behind the evocation. If you are using a banal formula, as they say here, right? I'm just evoking the name of God, repeating uh, uh, memorized words. Doesn't make any, any effect. We know the sentiment is everything in a prayer, not the words, not the, the formula. So on, when evoking spirits, um, we we are not going to prevent the interference of evil spirits that do not believe in God, right? And we see that uh, when we bring the name of Jesus sometimes in our, uh, in our uh, dialogues with spirits on, on Mondays, right? They, they say, don't, don't say this name or I don't care about uh, Jesus. Uh, you know, it makes no difference. Because again, uh, for some of the spirits, they are not interested. Uh, they are in a different wavelength. So saying the name of God or Jesus makes no difference for them. Um, it's not a, a shield, right? If you think about Jesus himself when he was incarnated among us, right? If he was able to change everybody around him, he would, but he wasn't. Even Jesus himself present in front of of. Um, of people were not was not able to change some of them. Many were changed, of course. You will, you receive you, you are in the presence of a of a perfect spirit uh, like Jesus. I can only imagine the effect that he, he may have, but it doesn't affect everybody. 
Uh, I know Daniela just studied the, the encounter of Publius Lentulus with Jesus, right? In the beginning of the book. Uh, did he, was he affected? He was very impressed, but did he change him? He did not, right? He went back to his old ways, right, Daniela? So uh, the fact that was Jesus in person didn't change him. Can you imagine if you just mention the name of uh, Jesus or God to a spirit that uh, is not interested at all? It doesn't make any difference, right? Uh, you know. It's like uh, you know talking in the name of Jesus for someone that doesn't uh, doesn't uh, doesn't know anything about Jesus, right? Someone in the eastern uh, regions, in, I don't know, in India or in China, that uh, know G that uh, a Jesus exists but know nothing about it, not negatively or positively. It's not going to make any difference if you bring up the name of Jesus. It doesn't make any. Uh, it doesn't influence anything. So. Um, it's important for us to, to remember it because sometimes we, we think, oh, we bring the name of God and people have to respect. Well, they should, but there's no guarantee they'll do, right? Mm -hmm. And actually, there's a lot of people that speak in the name of God with evil, mm -hmm. evil intentions, right? Which is even worse. Okay. Okay. Number 27. Can we evoke several spirits at the same time by name? This presents no difficulty. If there are three or four hands to write with, three or four spirits will respond at the same time. This happens when we have several mediums available. Again, we see this in our mediumship meeting, right? We, we, have, we may have three spirits uh, manifesting at the same time, one through psychophony, through a medium, and two through psychography with Renato and the Jussara writing, right? And it happens many times. Both are writing and we have a spirit manifesting. Again, we do not evoke, but you can evoke more than one spirit if you have more than one medium available. If you have only one medium, which is the next question, so I won't, I won't go into that. <laughs> and so I'd either read it before we comment. Yes, 28. When several spirits are evoked at once with only one medium present, which one responds? One of them will respond for all and will express the collective thought. So again, uh, when, when we are evoking uh, several spirits, we we are we should be evoking more evolved spirits, right? Not inferior spirits. Uh, and more evolved spirits, their speech is pretty much similar, right? So one can speak in the name of them. Let's say, you know, you 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 invoke the spirit of Saint Francis of Assisi, of Saint Paul, of uh, of. Um, uh, St. Peter, all at the same time. Only one of them is, is more than enough to speak through one medium to all of us. We don't need the, 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 the advices we are, are going to be basically uh, the same or similar. So they can, all, they, they can all be manifested through one medium and through one spirit, right? You're not going to have two spirits speaking at the same time through one medium. That doesn't work. But... Um, more than one spirit in their present. And that happens all the time. We have many spirits present when one spirit is giving the communication because when we are talking to one, we are talking to many uh, in helping and assisting them. So the same way, um, there could be several spirits trying to give us messages through one medium, one message. Okay. Okay. Number 29, can the same spirit communicate at the same time in the same session through two different mediums as easily as among you? Certain individuals can dictate several letters at once. We have seen a spirit respond to questions at the same time through two mediums, one writing in French and the other in English, both being identical in meaning 
and meaning in sometimes even literal translations of each other. Two spirits evoked simultaneously through two mediums may carry on a conversation. However, they do not require this form of communication since they can read each other's thoughts. They do it sometimes for our instruction. If there are little evolved spirits who are still imbued with earthly passions and notions that they held during their corporeal life, they may argue and shout swear words, mutually accusing each other of their wrongs and even throwing pencils, baskets, and or plechettes at each other. Hmm. Okay, so here, um, it's the, the it's some, somewhat different. So let's say a spirit communicating through two different mediums. Again, we only have to, at that time, they didn't have a television, right? So someone is talking a television to millions of people. Is, is one the same spirit talking to thousands of people? So if we can do that, we can imagine that uh, communicating through more than one medium, their thoughts is the same thing. And uh, Kardec gives an example of the, uh, uh, the of writing different languages. Again, language is thought transformed into words. So the thought can come and transform into words into different languages, to two different mediums, because the original thought is not in French or in English. Is a thought doesn't have any language, right? Universal language uh, of the universe. Uh, so he said being identical in meaning and sometimes even literal translations because he is emitting the same thought. Of course, there is some interference of the medium because the medium cannot write 100%. So they are identical in meaning, similar, and even literal translations because of how the mediums are writing. Uh, again, the same spirit giving the same message through psychography, through Renato and Jussara, who have two different messages according to their uh, own um, interpretations and limitations, right? But uh, the spirit can give more than one, right? Uh, it's interesting when he talks about uh, two, two spirits fighting against each other through two mediums here. This is not something that uh, we... Uh, we see because we have received one communication at a time through the psychophony, right? But, uh, but possible, yes, you have two mediums communicating at the same time, they can enter into arguments if you allow them, right? We shouldn't, but it's possible. And I imagine Kardec at the time experimenting and learning, they would allow it to see what happens, right? Because you can only learn by seeing uh, this type of thing by seeing what happens. So let's two spirits fight against each other and let's see what happens, analyze and and make a uh, a statement of what uh, it's what is the result of it. And I'm sure that's one, one thing that Kardec uh, saw and uh, wrote about it, which is it helps us all, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Number 30, can a spirit who is evoked at the same time in several places respond simultaneously to the questions? Yes, if it is a high order spirit. In such a case, does the spirit divide itself up or does it possess the gift of ubiqu ubiquity? The sun is only one whole, but nonetheless, it radiates its light everywhere, projecting its rays far and wide, but without dividing itself. The same applies to spirits. A spirit's thought is like a spark which projects its light afar and which can be seen from every part of the horizon. The purer the spirit is, the more thought radiates and scatters like a light. Less evolved spirits are too dense and cannot respond to more than one person at a time. They cannot answer your vocation at all if they have already been called to another place. When called at the same time to two different places, a highly evolved spirit will answer both the vocations if they are equally serious and fervent. Otherwise, it will favor the more serious one. The same thing happens when someone standing in one spot 
can transmit his or her thought through signal, signals that are visible in many directions. During one session at the Parisian Society of Spiritist Studies, in which the issue of ubiquity was being discussed, a spirit spontaneously dictated the following. You have been discussing the spirit hierarchy regarding the issue of ubiquity. You may compare us to a balloon that gradually rises into the air. While it is still near the ground, only a small circle of people can see it. But as it rises, the circle grows larger. And when it has reached a certain height, it can be seen by a vast number. The same happens with us. An evil spirit who is still attached to the earth remains within a narrow circle of persons who perceive it. As it ascends and improves itself, it will be able to converse with many people. When it finally becomes a highly evolved spirit, it will radiate like the solar light being perceived by several persons and in several places at the same time. Channing. Yeah, one, one and a half page mm. talking about uh, the pre-television or radio, right? Mm -hmm. uh, trying to explain how a spirit can communicate to several places responding simultaneously several questions. Nowadays, with our understanding of uh, the means of communication through mass media, it's much easier for us to understand. But uh, in terms of a spirit communication, a high order spirit, of course, can communicate through several mediums at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not that the spirit divides itself, doesn't possess the gift of ubiquity, and the, the example that uh, the spirits give is the sun, right? It's one sun, but radiates its light everywhere to make us understand better the concept of a spirit irradiating their thoughts everywhere uh, without dividing itself. Uh, and the purer the spirit is, the more the thought radiates. Then uh, the spirits talk about uh, called at the same time in two different places, a highly evolved spirit will either answer both at the same time if they are ser equally serious and fervent, or you will favor this more serious one, right? And uh, we have uh, many spiritist centers in Brazil that receive messages from Dr. Bezerra de Menezes. Um, you know, and uh, we can say that it's him communicating through many spiritist centers like a high order spirit that can give communications through to many centers. Or it could be spirits that work directly with him that represent him giving communications to these centers. Uh, mm -hmm. The example of the balloon here is a very interesting example, right? Because it, it, it uses the balloon to differentiate, to, to, to explain the spirit hierarchy. When the balloon is close to the ground, only uh, those that are around the balloon can see it. But as it goes up and up and up, more people can see it. So uh, the, the less evolved spirit, remains within a narrow circle of people that perceive it. And as it evolves, we'll be able to, to reach more people, right? And when it becomes a highly evolved spirit, radiates like the solar light, being perceived by several persons and several places at the same time. And that, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the, the governor of our planet, Jesus, that Jesus is with within all of us, with all of us. We are all directly connected to him. For us, it's difficult to understand how, he, how can he be connected to 25 billion people. But it's like this, like what they're describing here, radiates like the solar light reaching everyone, right? Uh, we can't explain how does it work, but we know that it works and it exists. Okay. 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 31. Right. Can pure spirits who have already completed their series of incarnations be evoked? Yes, but very rarely, because they only communicate with pure and sincere hearts, none who are proud or selfish. Hence, you must distrust low order spirits who claim to be such spirits 
in order to seem more important to you. Yeah, we unfortunately we see a lot of people that receive messages from Jesus, right? Uh, and mediums claiming to be receiving messages from Jesus, and uh, we, with a little knowledge, we, we know that uh, this is very unlikely, not impossible. Again, Jesus communicates. And uh, we have some of his communications through the codification, right? In the gospel, under the spirit of truth and in the medium's book. But we don't really need Jesus to be communicating with us at our level of evolution. We just need someone that is more evolved than us. It doesn't need to be Jesus. And he helps you know, all those that are working directly with Jesus, it comes from Jesus to the spirit that is closest to us. And that's the spirit that we need the communication. But because it will come from, from a ele more elevated uh, level than we are. And that's all we need. We don't, we have the messages of Jesus. We have the teachings, his teachings. We have the gospel. Now, do we need more messages from him? We can barely understand the, still understand the messages that he left us. So let's first learn and live the gospel of Jesus before asking him to send us more instructions. It's all there. The instructions are there. If we can follow, fully follow his instructions the way he left us, we don't really need anything else. Can we really follow his instructions? <laughs> Not really, right? We're still yeah. we're still learning and struggling. So uh, whenever we see someone claiming that he re have received a message directly from Jesus, let us uh, have uh, serious <laughs> doubts. Not criticize, not attack, but mm -hmm. uh, take it with a. It's not only a grain of salt, but with a whole packet of salt. <laughs> Okay, absolutely. Okay, number 32. How is it possible for the spirits of the most eminent individuals so easily and familiarly to answer the call of the most obscure persons? Humans judge spirits according to their own standards, which is wrong. Earthly status disappears after corporeal death. The sole standard among spirits is goodness. And those who are good can go anywhere where there is a good deed to perform. Hmm. How can uh, we uh, unknown individuals receive a message from Abraham Lincoln, right? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, he's the, one of the protectors of uh, the spiritist movement in this country. And he's interested in helping all those that are doing a serious work. So it does, we we feel that we are not worthy of this type of communication, but uh, the, the, these more evolved spirits are interested in the dissemination of the teachings of Jesus mm -hmm. throughout all possible means, including spiritism. And spiritism is, brings a, a whole new concept to, to, this, uh, to the knowledge of the spiritual world uh, in this country here, still in the beginning, right? So the forefathers of this country wanted to, to be spread because it brings the truth. It brings the hope, consolation. And uh, so they will, they will come to whoever is available to disseminate the good message. Now we are going to in some interesting uh, questions. Okay, 33. How soon after death can a spirit be evoked? You could evoke it at the very moment of death. Since it may still be in the state of confusion, it will not be able to respond very well. Since the duration of the state of confusion varies widely, it is impossible to set a specific time frame for evocation. Nonetheless, it is rare that a spirit after eight days or so is not sufficient sufficiently aware of its state in order to respond. It may even be quite able two or three days after death, but in any case, one should proceed prudently. 
Yeah. Here we have to think about um, how long does the state of confusion last after a spirit is uh, discarnates, right? Again, uh, let's the death of the physical body. It's not the discarnation of the spirit, right? The discarnation of the spirit is the separation, full separation from the physical body. The physical body can die and the spirit still not be fully separated. The spirit can be fully separated and the physical body still have showing signs of life. Uh, not No brain activity because we know when there is when still there is brain activity, the spirit is connected. But uh, like Elmo told us many times, the physical body can be kept alive with the heart pumping, the lungs breathing uh, artificially and there is no spirit connected. So the physical body is not dead, but the spirit is already discarnated. The other way around, the physical body dies. The spirit can take up to 72 hours to separate from the physical body. So there, the spirit may still be connected to a, a body that is dead, still in the process of separating. Okay, it takes up to 72 hours. So when can we evo evoke a spirit that uh, has discarnated? Well, we shouldn't. That's not what they're not saying here, but we shouldn't. They are in a state of confusion. You know, it's only going to disturb them. But th we can evoke them as soon as they are uh, aware of their situation. And Kardec this, did some of these evocations of, uh, that uh, there are reports in the in the Spiritist Review, and uh, and even in Heaven and Hell, right? In the second part of Heaven and Hell, but uh, in in general, as a general rule, right? Uh, let us allow the spirit to take their time to learn about their situation on the other side. Give them some time to recover before we go there evoking, because uh, it's very very likely that uh, we evoke a spirit right after that won't be able to to communicate because it's in no condition to communicate but again not important not impossible uh but difficult okay yeah 34 is evocation at the moment of death more troublesome for the spirit than it would be later on sometimes it would be like someone making you get up in the middle of sleep before you are completely awake. Nevertheless, there are some who have no problem at all and evocation may even help them out of the state of confusion. Each case is a case, right? So yeah. most cases it's going to be disturbing for the spirit because it's the, the comparison they make, right? When someone wake you up in the middle of the night and you are you know, you are in the state of sleep, it takes you some time to, to understand what's what's happening, what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that when you are sleeping, which is something that you do every day, uh, when you are discarnating or discarnated, uh, that happens once every 300 years, 200 years or 100 years, you know, it's much more complicated, right? So the spirit will uh, be very confused and it will be very difficult the communication but it may help some as they say here right an evocation may help them understand about their situation and help them move on but i my again my opinion not uh, not written anywhere this is the exception right exception is will be helping the spirit right after death to evocate evoke the spirit and uh, to help them i think more more of it will be uh, will be prejudicial to the spirit. Yeah. Okay. John, I, I remember the. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Sohad. Okay. There's a the example that I'm remembering, recalling now, is the one from Ghost when he passes on and he is so confused. And I remember yes. the man, the spirit that's in the hospital with him. He looks at him, he's trying to let, he sees him and sees that he's so confused. It's just exactly what they're saying here. Uh, it's very important to understand that, you know, when we pass on, it's not like uh, the light goes on and, and we know where we're at. 
We have to give time and, um, and understand this. But if we don't understand, this is many times it does happen that people don't understand it. After passing on, it's not like, uh, you know, you, you, you're gonna go in and, 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 and they're gonna understand where they're at. And it's very hard to understand that. But as we learn here in spiritism, it teaches you that when we pass on what happens, and this is why it's so important to understand and learn this. Yeah. Yeah, imagine if you go to sleep uh, in your bed and uh, someone transports you to London and you wake up in London the next day. Imagine the confusion you'll be until you understand what happened to you, right? You, you know, now imagine uh, the, the changing uh, realms of existence, right? Absolutely. It's much more complicated, right? Mm-hmm. Renato. Yeah, I'm um, just trying to, to make a parallel because of the word evocation. Because uh, I've been part of religions where um, one of the, uh, 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 what you call, um, forgot the name of the word. Well, they, they pretty much do the, the rituals. The rituals, yeah, that's the word. The rituals is to evoke the ancestors and yeah. they, but uh, it's not for the purpose of communication. Is the purpose of uh, you know sending prayers and honoring them and everything, but it's kind of an everyday thing, calling you know the full name and everything. So is that how how and I mean, what's the word that spiritism does to that? Because it's a little bit different of the evocation that we we perceive here. Yeah, no, here we're talking about evocations, meaning uh, mediumship communications, right? Uh, this type of uh, tri re uh, religious traditions that are passed on from family to generations to generations, uh, you have to imagine that the spirits that are part of this are prepared for that, right? Same way we learn here about spiritual world and we spiritists will be theoretically more prepared when we go back to the spiritual world because of our knowledge. Doesn't mean that we're going to find us ourselves in good places, but that our knowledge will help us make sense of what's happening to us in these uh, religious uh, traditions they have been raised for generations to 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 honor their ancestors and to call their ancestors so the ancestors expect to be called and are you know they, their availability will be the same exactly as we discuss here the, the evocations the, the, the some of them will be available some of them will, will not according to their conditions but those that are available because of their upbringing uh, how they live their lives they expect to be evoked and they expect to assist their their loved ones so I, I imagine that will be easy for them because it's something that they are expected to do and prepare themselves to do right? Don't you agree? Yeah, I mean, I never thought about it until till now. Uh, you know, uh, that's a, that's a part of my family that still keeps that tradition. Uh, I personally don't do that anymore because of um, you know, we study here that sometimes the spirit's in bad shape, and I don't you know, I don't like anybody bothering me, so I don't bother them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> good way of putting it, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. But, uh, but I, I already see with my own eyes. At that time, I didn't know that I had mediumship. Or I, I didn't understand that this, it really works. That the calling and they, they really come to receive. And, and the prayers, the mantra that, you know, that they are done, that they work. Because I've seen images uh no no that that time wasn't me it was my my mom uh, saw the uh, bringing uh, spirits that were pretty much dragged to the place that we were doing the the, the prayer and they received all the prayer and they left you know pretty much walking by themselves if you will so uh yeah so is the is a an evocation a sense of uh offering kind of thing that's why i was asking if it's the same word even though it's a different meaning yeah, I, 
again, I, I think that they, 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 they are prepared to do that, right? They expect them to do that. So it sounds um, more natural to me than, than someone that it doesn't, uh, it's not used to this type of evocations to be able to, to be evoked. It would be more complicated, but again, my my thoughts here on this subject, not uh, I, my understand when you brought it, that's what came to my mind again. To I imagine uh, the answer didn't come directly from me. Thank you. Okay, number thirty-five. How can the spirit of a child? who died at a tender age, respond consciously if during its corporeal life it hadn't yet arrived at self-awareness. A child's soul is a spirit still wrapped in the swaddling clothes of matter. When it is free of matter, however, it enjoys its spirit faculties, for spirits have no age, which proves that the spirit of the child has already lived before. Nonetheless, until it has been completely freed from its body, its conversation may, may still display some childlike characteristics. The body's influence, which may last for some time in the spirit of a child, may also be noted in the spirit of those who have died insane. The spirit itself is not insane, but we know that some spirits continue to believe for a while that they are still incarnated. Thus, it is no wonder that the spirit of an insane individual may still feel the impediment that had hindered its free manifestations during life until it has been completely freed. This effect varies according to the causes of the insanity because there are, there are insane persons who immediately recover their lucidity after death. Okay, so this is the last question and uh, it's an interesting one, right? Uh, how can a spirit of a child who died at a tender age respond consciously? And we discussed this, right? The, the state of a child, uh, depending on the self-conscious that they have and the involvement of the spirit inhabiting that child's body, uh, it can uh, much quicker recover the previous state of, of being, of, a, you know, a, 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 an eternal evolving spirit, or it can still manifest as a child because it takes, it goes back to, to the spiritual world, but continues to grow in the spiritual world until it reaches the adult age equivalent on earth, right? We, we read about uh, spiritual colonies of children uh, in, uh, in the book uh, Between Heaven and Earth, in the in the book by Reverend Owen Vale, right, the city of Castrell. So not only so not only in Spiritism we find uh, spiritual colonies of children. So um, depend the, you evoke a child that died at a young age. Let's say you evoke a child that died at five. That child may manifest as a five-year-old child if it's allowed and brought by spirits, or it may manifest as an, uh, an evolved spirit that is already back to their old uh, state of, of uh, self-awareness as an eternal spirit, right? Uh, it can be both cases. And then uh, Kardec brings the, the, those that died uh, insane, right? That have insanity, that the spirit itself is not insane. Of course, we know that it's a, uh, deformation of the physical body but the spirit living for a certain period of time as an insane individual may still feel in their minds they are not they haven't been able to free themselves in the spiritual world of that impediment uh, so it may take some time also for these spirits depending on their level of evolution right because uh, if you are uh, insane individual incarnated what's the reason for that if you came here because you through that you needed to help others but it was not for your own uh, expiation then immediately when you go back to the spiritual world you you go back to your old self but if you are here on an expiation 
the insanity is uh, an instrument from for you to prevent you from causing more harm to yourself then it may take a while when you are back to the spiritual world to to free yourself from the impressions of that physical body that affected your uh, your actions and thoughts okay uh, we're not going to start the evocation of animals i'm very happy to leave that for elmo <laughs> <laughs> okay that's that's you know we all know the what what what, what is coming but I, I prefer to let elmo deal with it next week because it's uh, uh it's a complex subject uh it shouldn't but it is uh, and the other days uh, i was watching a lecture and someone asked the the lecturer if animals have peri spirit Oh, wow. That's a good one, huh? Yes, it is. For a Q&A? <laughs> yes. yes, it's great. <laughs> yes. And the answer is no. Of course not. Because the perispirit is, is a projection of our mental body, right? Mm -hmm. The yeah. perispirit is formed by the spirit based on their thoughts and their manifestation. And animals... They don't have the mental body and the free will that we have. So do they have a spiritual form? Yes, they do, yeah. of course. But we cannot call it a perispirit. Right. Mm -hmm. There is another John, word for it. Yes. Uh, one of these this lectures I was hearing from uh, Raul Teixeira, it was mentioned that, you know, uh, we already passed the part of doing things that we uh, have done in the past, like, you know, uh, materialization and, you know, things that we've done on the upbringing of the spirit is, but he mentioned as well that there are uh, places in Brazil, very few and very hard to find. They still, um, still uh, keep on doing those things for a specific uh, tasks, let's put that way. Uh, so are you aware of that and you you think there's still a place for evocation um, nowadays for yes. um... uh, again uh, spiritism is is, uh, is very wide in terms of uh, your you know avenues that you can explore there is a very serious spiritist center in Rio de Janeiro that still does materialization on a regular basis still have materialization sessions. It's, uh, I think it's called Andrea Luis. Um, I'm not sure. It's in, in, in Tijuca, if you know Rio. Uh, it's one of the biggest centers in Rio. And they do materialization still. Uh, there are centers that do the type of work that Chico used to do, the, the letters to loved ones. There are centers that still do that. And it's uh, also something that... It, uh, uh, is 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 helpful and useful, and there are centers that do evocations. Um, again, depends on the purpose, right? Um, if you are doing evocations to provide help and assistance with a sincere intention, the the good spirits will be there assisting you. So, we we think that we can more be more useful uh, doing the type of work that we do. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing. But, uh, but we are not going to, everything that uh, falls within uh, the true uh, teachings of Kardec, uh, I, I, I see no problem in if they continue doing it, right? The, uh, my, my problem is with deviations from the doctrine, right? When you have centers doing chromotherapy or hypnotism or or you know reiki this this is not spiritism or or apometry right which is also very common in brazil now it used to be more popular now it's becoming less and less known um, this is why i asked we asked divaldo right and divaldo said uh, you know spiritism is spiritism apometry is apometry different things so um, materialization 
it's part of spiritism. Evocation is part of spiritism. So if they are doing that, that's fine. If they are doing with the good intentions. Yeah, I ask, I ask because, uh, you know, we study that um, sometimes uh, people that look for those uh, physical, more physical um, manifestation, explanation of spirits, um, um, most of the times don't, you know, they are they only trying to entertain their curiosity. That's why it's not something that is uh, often, that's why I find interesting when he was saying that there is still uh, to this day uh, practicing this is sincere you know spirit spirit school by doing that I imagine that uh, they are assisted by good spirits as well so I kind of uh, find a little bit at least on my little knowledge of that contradictory from what we are studying to keep on doing that but you know again you explained that it's, it's all about the intention so I guess uh, we have to trust they are doing a good job <laughs> Again, uh, spiritism, uh, even uh, those that are doing outside spiritism, if they are doing with serious intention and uh, do a serious work, right? The, 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 there are some uh, Umbanda houses in Brazil that do a, a nice work with uh, helping those in, those in need, right? Uh, there is one book of Divaldo that, uh, one book of, I think, Manuel Filomeno de Miranda that, uh, uh, the whole time is in one of these uh, Umbanda centers, right? And uh, and they do a, a very good work there. Again, as long as you don't call itself spiritist, right? Because then you are using the name that doesn't belong. Then I have no problem. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you all. Um, I think only Fabio wasn't here when I announced that uh fabio you didn't hear right that we are changing the thursdays in my starting may uh no what is it so we're we're going back to the center i am going back to the center we will continue with the uh, online meetings for the spirits book but will be from seven to eight and the mediums book will will be we we'll move to sunday on the third sunday of the month we'll study the mediums book so we'll have only one session on thursdays at 7 p.m. starting in May. <coughs> okay. All right. So we will do the fraternal assistance in the center from six to seven. We'll do the hybrid uh, study at the center and via Zoom, like we always do. So for those that watch our studies online, it's the same thing. We'll continue watch. It's just the different time. It starts at seven, goes from seven to eight. Okay. But uh, we'll we'll keep advising. Okay. Okay, so I will do our final prayer. Yes, of course. Our spiritual benefactors, our guardian angels, and of course, our Father, our Christ Jesus, with our hearts full of gratitude, we thank you as we gather here today again studying and understanding the vocation of spirits and understanding them to learn and help all those around you who don't understand. We pray, dear Father, for the strength and courage of all who are going through serious complications of hospitals and hospices throughout this land and most important may we continue to pray for all that are suffering in Europe and here in these United States may we continue with prayers throughout the week and continue to understand where we have studied tonight we pray for all of the SGNY, our teachers, our mentors, our mediums. May we continue throughout the week, giving us ourselves all that we need in studying and understanding. We ask as we leave here today, be able to come back again next week and to join our meetings throughout the week, our study groups, 
without teachers and mentors. We thank you, dear Lord. And with that in mind, we ask permission to close this meeting tonight. So be it.